Hi, it's Nero here from Investment Rise, and it's true. The Australian property market hit a new low recently. Now, what was that low? It was a record low in property supply. Now, if you've been following any of my past work, you'll know that I've been often talking about the primary reason why prices are rising so quickly at the moment is because demand is far outstripping supply. And with the ending of all the government in incentives, a lot of people thought that that demand that it, which was being artificially held up, well, that would end and property prices would start to slow down. But nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, as I said, we're now at a record supply low. I mean, check this out. Aussie homes fly off the market as winter invites stiff competition. Australian homes are selling faster than ever as the property market enters what is expected to be an unseasonably active winter season, according to new analysis from realestate.com.au. The latest REA Insights Housing Market Indicators report shows the typical property listed on realestate.com.au in May had been on the site for just 32 days compared to 37 days in April and 62 days in May 2020. In releasing the report on Wednesday, realestate.com.au economist Anne Flaherty said the 32-day national average was a historic low, highlighting strong selling conditions across Australia currently. We're seeing properties fly off the site faster than we've ever seen, Ms. Flaherty said. And I'm seeing this across the borders as well. In fact, I see a lot of our clients and, and members who are helping find property, they're going on realestate.com.au to see you know, what the price they should pay. And they're finding that a lot of the listings online, where the properties are outdated, they've already been sold. You, know, you call up the listing agent and the comment often is, oh, that property sold, but here we've got another one and it's 10 grand, 20 grand, whatever the case may be, more expensive. All right, so we definitely have some supply shortages. And what is that gonna mean for the future of property prices? Well, it certainly seems that property prices are set to keep marching higher for quite a while yet. And for there to be such a supply shortage, it has to mean one of two things. Either fewer people are selling, or more people are buying or looking to buy than ever before. And according to the data, it's actually the second one. I mean, there are more people now selling than was the case a few months ago, as more and more sellers can see how hot the market is and they want to cash in, but even more people are buying. And what's the one group of uh, people who are really adding to this excessive demand in the property market? It's property investors, smart, savvy property investors who can see that the property market is set to rise much further and they're jumping in right now to get the most amount of capital growth that they possibly can over the next little while. Property investors are back, NAB. This is from the Australian Financial Review. Loan applications from property investors have started to lift, but market conditions are a long way from requiring any Macro prudential intervention, said National Australia Bank's personal banking boss, Rachel Slade. With Australian Bureau of Statistics figures last week showing a 12.7% jump in investor lending in March to $7.8 billion, the highest monthly growth in investor finance since July 2003, Ms. Slade said. We have seen investor interest come back and we have definitely seen investor applications start to lift. The highest monthly growth since July 2003? That's 18 years ago. And what was the average price of property in 2003 compared to what it is right now? It was roughly about half, right? Especially in places like you know, Sydney and Melbourne. And yet investors are jumping in more and more. And I said, it's because they can see the price growth, but also, and we're doing seeing this for so many of our members, it's never been easier to find property that's rising in value right now that also pays you a net return each and every month. And what I mean by that is the rents are covering the mortgage, which means you're getting the benefit of both positive cash flow each and every month, which you can use to supplement your lifestyle or pay off your personal mortgage faster, while also getting capital growth. It's a win-win and that's no wonder, therefore, that so many investors are jumping on board. 
And if we look at this next chart from macrobusiness.com.au, it clearly shows that investors are once again crowding out first home buyers. Okay, so we can see here the blue line is about investors and uh, loan demand from investors. The orange line is uh, loan demand from first home buyers. And what we can see here is that in this chart, it shows that the first home buyer mortgage demand briefly overtook investor demand in early 2009 and again in late 20 and early 21, only for investors to then crowd out first home buyers once again. Now you might recall what happened to the property markets, especially Sydney and Melbourne, when investors started crowding out first home buyers back in sort of 2009 onwards. Well, we know shortly afterwards we had the biggest property boom that we'd ever had at that particular time. But now we're seeing investors crowding out the first home buyer market in multiple markets across the, the, the country. And I expect that this is going to add even more demand. We're going to see more supply shortages, more excess demand over supply, which means that price growth almost has to have happen. It's almost being forced up as a result of this excessive demand. But then of course, as an investor, you might be saying, oh look, prices have risen so much, should you wait? Especially when you see articles like this. Australian house price growth to slow by the end of 2021, economists. The rapid pace of Australian house price growth is set to slow by the end of the year, economists predict, as affordability pressures bite and more homes are offered for sale. The housing market has soared at a faster pace than some bank economists expected, leaving them to upgrade their forecasts after core logic figures revealed dwelling values soared by 10.6% over the 12 months to May across the country. So articles like this which talk about price growth slowing are being jumped on by I guess some of the property bears out there who are saying, oh see, the market's going to crash. <laughs> no, 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 no. What it means is simply this. If the market has risen by say $100,000 in the last say 12 months as it had in many areas around uh, Australia, it may rise by $80,000 over the next uh, 12 months. Okay, so yes, it's less growth than we've seen over the last 12 months, but it's still significant. I mean, I for one would much rather be buying property now rather than paying an extra 80 grand or so in 12 months time. So yes, the rate of property price growth might slow, but that's only expected at the end of 2021, according to some economists, and many even expecting it only to slow by the end of 2022. Regardless of when the rate of price growth slows, the fact is, price growth is happening, which means that if you are an investor, it's a message I've been saying multiple times, the sooner you jump in, the better the opportunity is for you and the more chance of you getting more capital growth and really giving yourself that kickstart to achieve your financial goals going forwards. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you found this video valuable and you're thinking you might like my help to help you find an investment property, then head on over to Nero Call com to discover our unique five-step process that's helped my private client group purchase now well over 66.2 million dollars worth of property and then if you like what you see you can book in for a half hour phone consult with me personally either way thanks again for watching